everyone. As many of you know from my other social medias, I am currently in Australia. In two days, like I've been here for a few days, but in two days time, I flew from Iceland to San Francisco and then to Australia. And I kind of broke it up that way so that, because like, if you fly from Iceland to Australia, it's actually a really, really intense trip. And I think it takes about 36 hours. And I didn't want to go through, like it just went through an area I didn't want to go through. So I just decided to fly back to North America and then get on a direct flight right to where I wanted to come. That honestly just seemed to be the easiest way to do it. But that was tough because in one day I had an 11 hour flight and then I got to rest. I got to um, stay over, stay the day with one of my friends and just kind of hang and relax. And then I hopped on a 14 hour flight to Australia. So that was quite the journey. And surprisingly, I was not jet lagged. Like I managed at each Time that I stopped in each in each continent I was able to catch up on that sleep somehow so anyways I'm so thankful for that but I, I do feel a little bit tired this week but it's I don't think I suffer from jet lag like what what like what other people might suffer because that was quite the journey anyways and then Australia for a little bit of course just hanging out here and working and it's really really nice to be away from the cold weather of Canada so I am soaking it up as much as I can after this, I might be going to Miami. I'm everywhere, guys. I am everywhere. I know everyone will say you live such a life of luxury and travel, but it definitely has its downfalls. But it's been such a great experience to be able to do all these things. So this video is all about my Iceland tour and what it was like working on that. And I hope I can give you some insight about what it actually looks like to work on a tour and maybe help you prepare yourself to get, get a job like that. Because there's definitely some stuff behind it that I think helps people be able to work on tours. So normally when I am working on a tour, I'm usually working with just one other person. Like me and Josh have done a lot of tours together and it's just two of us and we take roughly around eight people with with us and it's small it's it's a very very small thing and we usually go for about a week that is the standard kind of tour time that I've noticed but for this one I was actually working with Skylum software and they have Luminar which is an incredible program I've really really been enjoying um, learning that and using that because I am now a user of it I actually just added into my regular workflow and it's got some really really cool things about it maybe in another video, I'll cover editing with Luminar and what it can do. It's pretty cool. And it's kind of cool to see all the neat things that AI technology um, allows us to do. Anyways, so I was approached by them and asked if I would be interested in coming on their Iceland photo tour. It's like, it was like a photo camp and as one of the masters. So there was six of us masters that were leading this with the Skylum team. Like the Skylum team is huge. So I, I'm not going to go off and name them all because there's a lot of people behind the program that were there. It was incredible to get to know them all and I'm so happy that I can now call them my friends. But for the photography instructors, there was six of us masters. That's what we were called. So it was me and Yuri. I cannot say Yuri's last name, but I'm sure you all know who he is. Albert Dros was there and he's incredible. He's such a nice guy. Um, Javi Sands, he, me and him became quite close and that was really, really enjoyable to hang out with him. And Jim Nix, he is also there. He was like our editing just guru oh my gosh just watching him edit was really really amazing and then Serge was also there and he's a French photographer so it was really cool to work with all of those fellas and I'm happy to say that I came away with new friendships so Skylum had approached me and asked me if I wanted to be a guide on this tour and of course I said yes because I just love jumping at all opportunities and it was incredible honestly it was better than what I ever thought that it would be but I didn't go into it thinking that it would be bad at all it was amazing and just like all the other tours it was exactly the same it was just at a much larger scale so we actually had 38 participants which I know seems like a lot but honestly it worked out so well we split the entire group into two 
bigger groups or smaller groups, I should say. And we would, sometimes we'd end up at the same location, but we made it so that everybody did get a chance to go to all the locations, but we just flipped it around. And of course, the bigger the location, then obviously the most of, all of the group could go to those ones. And I know it seems like, oh my gosh, wow, 38 people, that must have been chaotic while shooting. But it honestly, it wasn't at all, it was perfect. Everybody had room, everybody had freedom to shoot. And yes, Iceland is a very popular country for landscape photography, but even then, it was still easy. Obviously, some of the waterfalls, like they, I know you guys know them all, I don't even have to name them off. There's definitely the ones that are just way too many people at, but we still went to those ones and people were still able to shoot and we obviously taught them like what to look for in case there is too many tourists around. So for being a large group, it was amazing. And every single, honestly, I don't think there was one participant on this tour that had a bad time. They all loved it. And just like all the other ones I've ever been on, we all really became like one big family. I think a lot of people might get confused between the difference of a photo tour and a workshop. I don't know if there actually is a defined line of these two things, but I do know that the majority of photographers have their own kind of way of explaining it. And it seems that a workshop is very like, we'll say classroom based. So you might sign up for a day long workshop to learn about how your camera operates. You're likely going to be indoors. They're going to be showing you a lot of slides, presentations, and really taking you step by step on how to do it. And there obviously is in the field workshops, but it's just different. It's more of the education based when you're on a workshop. And then a photo tour is more like an experience with the teaching involved. So it's really, really based around locations and taking the clients around to all the different locations at the best time when the light is really good and you know what the photographers know of years and experience, you know, when you want to be there and yeah, just things like that. So it's more about getting the clients to the place and then of course helping them when they're there if they need it. But that's the thing. It's only if they need it and if they want the help. There are so many people that go on photo tours that are very confident in what they do. Of course, they, you know, like they listen and they'll learn new things, especially if you're showing them some stuff. But like everybody I've found is usually very independent with their shooting. It's actually really, really lovely. It gives you a lot more freedom to actually just speak from, I guess, your heart maybe and show them what you do and just show them maybe different ways versus the classroom base, which would be like very structured step by step. So a photo tour to me is more about going out and guiding and taking to locations with a little bit of teaching involved and then workshop is full on teaching. And I think that's the best way to explain it. And I think um, when clients come on photo tours, to be quite honest, I think it's mostly for the experience. I don't think it's necessary. Of course, photography is the bread and butter to it, but I really truly believe that a lot of these people just love getting out and want to meet new people and go on an exciting adventure. And I love that. That is why I think I match really well with photo tours and why I enjoy working on them so much. So everyone had a wonderful time. I made so many new friends and the Skylum team, again, they are incredible to work for. I'm very particular with brands. If I don't like how they operate or if I don't think it, they're a very good company to the photography community, I won't work for them. I don't care if they'll pay me to do things for them. I'm, I'm very choosy with the brands that I work with and the Skylum team, oh my gosh, I just, I miss them all so much. It was a really, really great company to work for. And I just think they did an excellent job at putting on that tour. And of course, there's gonna be another one. So if you are interested in this, then you will get another chance to come on another one with them. It was awesome. And even the participants are, you know, they're working with us, the photographers, but they were also working alongside the Skylum team. So it was super cool. Everybody was just creating and having an amazing time. So the tour was seven days. I, yes, it was seven days and we just went all around Iceland and we had, we went to, you know, hit all the really popular locations, but still they were beautiful and rightly so because everybody wanted to see all those spots. And then we had some lesser known ones, but it was incredible every day. You know, there were some bad weather days, but even that didn't seem to throw us off. So the tour was just a huge success. 
And how you actually, I guess, land these jobs. I mean, it's not every day that photographers are approached by companies to come out and teach, but you can definitely start yourself and, you know, get yourself going. And how I did that was I just started approaching my fellow photographers, ones that were already leading photo tours. And I just said that I was interested in working on a photo tour, gave them, told them about my experience and then just made connections through that way. And then one tour, you know, you do one tour and then one tour leads into another one and it's a very slow growing process. But it is a lot of work, I will not lie. And especially if you're putting on your own tour, there's a lot of planning involved, not to mention the marketing and everything to even get people on these tours because it is quite a bit of money to go and attend these tours, rightly so it's a trip in another country most of the time. So it's thousands of dollars. And then you come to learn actually the different markets of clients and where I sit right now and what I've seen the most of is it does seem to be older people that are going on these tours. So I want to say like 50 plus and it kind of makes sense. You know, they would likely be the ones who are more established with whatever they're doing in their career. And this is more of like a hobby for them and of an experience where they get to come out and enjoy. And a lot of them are retired, so they just have the option to be able to go take a trip and just, you know, spend time in their photography hobby. I think the younger, um, younger clients, like I've, I've definitely been on a tour where there have been younger people, but those are smaller ones and they are usually a lot less priced. So there's not like, there's not as much hand holding involved with it as in driving them around or accommodation. You know, you let them take care of all that stuff in lieu for a cheaper tour. And that my experience, again, that seems to be where the younger people flock to. And again, that makes sense. You know, there is definitely a lot more independence when I think you're younger and you're more willing to go and struggle out there and try and figure out things on your own. Whereas people who are a little bit older, they have, if they have the money to pay for it, of course, why would they not just, you know, book an all exclusive photography trip. So there's that really understanding the markets of clients. And again, since they are much older, um, not much older, that is so awful to say. That not. I know some of them are going to watch this and be like, why do you keep calling us old? But we did, we talked about that on the tour a lot. We talk about the different clients. So they're just, we'll say 50 and up. Those seem to be the people who flock to these tours. I just have to say, cause it, there, I think we had some that were actually in their eighties and they were doing things that like none of my friends would even do. So it was absolutely incredible to see that. I love seeing people come and just push themselves out of their comfort zone, all in the good name of photography. The people who work on photo tours will tell you that the days are incredibly long and I will confirm this. Um, if you ever go to work on a photo tour, especially if it's a week long, just prepare that that entire week from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, you are on. Um, you eat dinner with the clients, you eat lunches and you drive everywhere with them. And then not to mention the sunrise and the sunsets, it is exhausting, but it's a good exhausting. It's not a bad thing. And even the clients themselves are exhausted by the end. So that's probably something that I think might shock people is that your days can end up being like 17 hour days. And for myself, since I, you know, run my own business, I definitely struggle on photo tours to stay in the loop with what I have going on in other areas. So it's just best that before you even get on a photo tour, you prepare ahead. Like if you have other things that you need to get done, in my case, preparing YouTube videos, which I didn't do. So <laughs> and I had to scramble around to film them. Um, make sure you prepare yourself because that week can seem really, really long. And it's definitely a chunk that takes away from your other work. I think the biggest struggle for me on the photo tours, something that I noticed and something like moving forward when I talk to clients or pe book people on, it's just, it's really cool to actually be able to learn these things. But I noticed that not a lot of people know their own cameras and um, like, where's the line of what, what you're really teaching them. So I, I guess what I mean is I sh I'm a Canon shooter and you know, I know my Canon camera and I can usually help with other Canon shooters. But if you throw a Nikon in my hands or a Sony, there's just no way. And it's more so like the settings, like menu settings and what is this and what is that? And of course, you know, we, we do our best. Usually there's everybody kind of belongs to a different camera brand who is a guide. But that part I can find is really, really tricky. So moving forward for myself, it's like how, how to help best with this, like how to help prepare the clients 
for the tour because it's not really a place where you want to spend just learning about camera settings. I definitely feel like this video is going on for a long time and I do believe I've actually covered quite a bit of bases of what it's like to work on a photo tour. But again, if you want to get into this line of work, start reaching out to your friends and also just start planning like your own little mini tours. So don't do not think that in your first year and I, I actually did this, you know, you see all your other friends leading photo tours, but you have absolutely no experience doing it. You're not going to be leading photo tours that are like $7,000 a person. Start Start very small and start more like around the work, maybe around a workshop, like a day long thing and just keep doing that over and over and see if you actually really like it and then build and grow and start planning bigger ones. So it is something that is start very small and just let it gradually grow and build before throwing yourself into a week long photo tour in Iceland or something like that because it is definitely full on. And even trying to put out something like that when you just don't have the market of clients is definitely a recipe for it not working out. But how else do you learn, right? I learned the hard way with photo tours and yeah, I really, really enjoy them. I'm very social and I do feel you need to be a little bit social to be on them. So it's right up my alley. But if you're introverted and crowds just absolutely drain you, you might want to rethink something like a photo tour. Anyway, I am going to share some images that I did take in Iceland with you guys as always at the end of the video. Please subscribe if you liked this and give it a like because it also helps uh, push through that algorithm. And again, thank you so much for helping me grow because it really is a team ever that we're doing this. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.